أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. And I, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate you thinking about me for this one. Um, and if anything, um, I did have limited time, but however, you um, were very patient with me as I was giving long answers to the questions, trying to make sure that I gave the audience some, some good info to think about and to understand. And uh, thank you for sending me that reminder. And I appreciate you being patient with my long winded sermons. Oh, no, no, no. That, 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 that's what it's for. I mean, you know, you're more of a veteran in this than I am as far as the, uh, you know, as an orator, you know, like I said, I have the speech impediment. You know, and things like that. I, I've been publicly speaking since uh, uh, 91, really, since 91. <clears throat> but but but, but uh, that, that's mainly to Muslim crowds, you know what I'm saying? So when you have to have the general appeal, you know, you have to speak to, and I, I've spoken to universities and things like that, colleges, what have you, uh, high schools, uh, giving lectures about Islam, you know, but it's always about the subject that I understand and I'm comfortable with, which is Islam. But this new uh, manosphere, this man versus woman, you know, in Islam, that's, that's not something that we even fathom or, or deal with. Uh, but but now it's affecting our folk. So now we have to talk mm -hmm. about it. You know? Yes, yeah, it's exactly. Amazing. It's a forced topic. It's yeah. like that, like the whole war that they've waged on us was forced on us. We, we men had no interest in it of any culture. This is a similar thing. I mean, we Muslims were not walking around looking for this type of conflict. But when that misandry jumped into the Ummah, um, both in the East and in the West, it forced us to deal with this. Um, and in all honesty, I'm like you, I mean, as a Muslim, I would have never conceived that this was going to be the relationship between, at least not between Muslim men and women. And like you, I was surprised and I had to come to terms and come to grips with the fact that we're forced to deal with this. And this is why we've got to tell young Muslim men that, that live in the West, you can't stay in the West thinking that you're going to find somebody. Um, now, granted, we do believe in Hijra if it's a possibility. If you can do it, you, you migrate. We both believe in that. You leave where they, they oppress you. But it's like now you and I have been forced to tell young men um, you're going to have to bounce because, uh, yeah, you, you'll have to because you can't even stay where you are and then think you're going to start a family and keep that family together. Um, it's not even an option for you. And not only that, but we've had to come to, to grips with the fact that one of the reasons why we have had a hard time keeping Islam through the generations, why we have Muslim grandparents and non-Muslim grandkids or even Muslim parents and non-Muslim adult children, yeah. we, we've had to come to grips with the fact that it's not usually the father that uh, just let the religion go. It's usually that he chose wrong. Yeah. And then she decided she was going to put the dunya ahead of the dean in raising the kids. And then therefore, when he says, OK, well, look, uh, we can live over here and we can practice more freely. We can hold on to this faith. And she says, absolutely not, because she knows that she can't take him. She can't divorce grape him uh, over there. She knows that she can't get double protections. She understands that. And what I would last thing I'll say before I cut out, because you've been patient, is that We'll have to start telling these young men when I'm talking, we need to get the message out until guys that are about to go into middle school understand this, because that's the age in which a lot of their sisters understand certain games to play on men. First day of middle school, a lot of them have been burst. we got to get the message out until guys going into sixth grade understand what the plan must be. And we also have to we as grown men may have to start going into chat rooms or how, however we can befriend the men in areas where misandry is new, it's a new phenomenon or it's not there yet and warn them and let them know what's coming. It's actually in the best interest of humanity if we tell the, the Filipino man in the chat room with Google Translate, if you have to use that to break down the language barrier, let them know this feminism's a problem, misandry is a problem. And you gotta know that, it's, that, that people are gonna try to put it into your country. So that way, all of us, Eastern and Western alike can be on one page. And we know that we are to reward the traditional ones that don't go out here trying to fight with men and, and confuse men and uh, uh, oppress men. Reward them as well as ostracize the ones that decide they're gonna to try to take double protection. And they're gonna fight with men and fight even with nature and the law in order just to make sure that the men don't have it too easy. We have to all be on one, one accord about that. And that's, the, that's pretty much the summation of my message. And thanks again, sir. 
Exactly, alhamdulillah. So, like I said, I'll, I'll edit it up and, uh, and make it palatable for public consumption. So, uh, well, I appreciate you coming on. I, uh, enjoy your day, inshallah, or your night, I guess, right now, right? Night? It's night there, right? Uh, we've got about an hour and a half left of daylight. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh, well, Allah be with you, Akhi. Uh, and uh, until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam and Allah be with us together, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala. So there you have it. In order for women to become the best friends of their husbands that they advocate or fantasize about, they have to be willing to learn from nature and be willing to do the necessary things and take the necessary steps to assume the title of man's best friend from the canine. Some are going to take this as women are being compared to dogs. No, we're talking about qualities, no matter where you find them. If you do a blog or a video talking about how men compare to cats, I wouldn't be offended by that. Just as the common uh, the common thought is that any promiscuous man is a dog. Any man that doesn't treat women well is a dog. Any man that desires more than one woman is a dog. We've been compared to dogs the whole time. I'm talking about the positive traits that we find in the canine species that you all can adopt and make yourselves more affable, make yourselves more agreeable, more accommodating, more endeared to the male human species. This has been Saad Imam for Exfactly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن